Good Lord. Hey, it's another episode of Bob. I know. Been quite a few, hasn't there, recently? Anyway, enjoy. Not actually done a huge amount of filming this week, um, which is going to make the next episode a bit short, really. Um, so I'd better get on with it. <laughs> no. So, wheels. The uh, original style wheels with the small centre hole, these are obviously upside down at the moment, and the paint is still going off. In fact, it's probably dry by now. Yes, I think it's right. So let's tip it over. Original style wheels, Ross Styles. Uh, I took a moment to Planet Wheels, um, and they grip blasted them back, got all the original paint off. And I've got five of the very best of the early style steel wheels, rims, uh, and I'm going to paint them now. There's a few knocks in here and there and so forth. But I'm painting them using a two-pack uh, paint. Um, it's a metallic, but it's a solid two-pack rather than a base over, sorry, clear over base. Um, that's gone on quite nice, actually. quite like that. Very nice. Satin finish. That'll do the job, won't it? Five of those. I can get the tyres on then. Oh, yes. Um, and then in other news, I've been... Oh, glasses in. First piece of glass. Um, and obviously the, 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 the trim panels and so forth. This this piece of trim down here, this isn't a brand spanking new complete seal. No, or of, or of. Um, This is just the piece that goes on the bottom edge. Now, I've got some challenges with this seal because it shrunk. And I've been over the dimensions of the hole, and the hole is to the millimetre perfect, and the seal, as you can see, orf, orf, is some way out. Now, I've not put the filler pieces in on the back yet, but I'm going to have to work out what I'm going to do with this one. The one on the other side, no problems at all. I never did get the windscreen in. <clears throat> the first one was the wrong size. The second one was broken. Um, they're coming in on Monday. Put all the fuses in as you've seen because I've done the electrics, nothing else really on this side. Oh, doesn't that shut nicely? Um, the wings are on really because I wanted to just double check all of the alignment, everything really, before I go and start painting shit. Um, nothing really up here apart from the batteries connected behind my coffee there. Mm. On this side. Uh, this is the original wing. The only thing I haven't done with this yet is I've not flatted back the filler on this bottom edge. Now, I'm actually quite happy with the profile of the thing, so what I'll do is I'll block that back, um, and then when I'm satisfied with the overall look of the thing, then it will get painted. I need to paint the shut faces in here first of all, then I might assemble it and paint the whole damn thing. I don't know yet. I'll do whatever needs doing. And then the window on this side can go in as well driver's door so really I wanted to get it so that I've got all of the kind of repair work done that we're going to get done on it and get it into a coat of primer and then really just double check that it works as you can see it there's not one shim on this door anywhere this is exactly where I want it exactly that couldn't be fucking more perfect if it tried um, so the other side I fiddled around with the shims a little bit but then I hadn't had an opportunity to mess around with the door on that now I still need to mess around with a little bit with the door because it is bowing out a little bit in the middle edge here so I need to adjust the frame so it comes this way straighten things out now I can do it largely with my knee to be honest but you can see there it's touching the B post there and it's still too far off in the middle so it still needs some work Put it on the bench, clout that with a mallet along that edge there and beat it back out again. Now that is possibly as a result of too much tension because of the world of repairs here, but more likely because of the damage at the leading edge down here where the whole edge was folded over. <clears throat> I didn't actually check that when it was last on the car, but as far as the profiles are concerned, and you can follow the line from the rear wing along the bottom edge there, it's actually not that bad. Um, it will look good. Don't worry about that. Right, moving forward a step with uh, windscreen gate. Um, this is a windscreen, heated windscreen, that I took out of a car that I broke many, many, many years ago. It's been sitting in my workshop at home. Um, and I lay this in, just basically just laid it over the top of the rubber and it fits beautifully. That will go into the rubber without too many problems at all. Um, there is a gap around the edge. They're designed for it. 
Um, but yeah, I'm confident that that screen will fit. Um, the other one, and this is a sticker that Seath put on it, by the way. When I went to Le Mans, Seath found that sticker on a orange, I think. Stuck it on my bloody windscreen for me. Yeah, thank you, Seath. Um, yeah, so, I mean, the other screen was like, it was far too tall. I mean, it wouldn't even sit in the rubber. And it was, it was, it was over the top up here. Um, and then also it had like a gap like that on this edge. And I was thinking, holy crap, what have I done? No, it's not my fault, that one, I'm afraid. Anyway, so hopefully we'll get a new ski screen fitted tomorrow. And this one's a Pilkington screen, you see? Pilkington laminated heated screen. Um, this may well go into my car, into L95, um, the screen, because there's actually not a lot wrong with it, apart from the dust on it. Lots of dust. Um, but yes, completely fanny sticker. There you go. Um, right, so that was that. Now, I'm going to start going through all of my parts, I think, today, and working out all the bits I need to get hold of, all of the fluids I need to get hold of to finish this bloody project. Finish this marvellous project. It, it needs to be done in two weeks. So we are currently, all 26th of June. Yesterday was my birthday. Um, and, uh, yes. So this has got to be done. I've had some kind of issues in the workshop. I've had some issues in my family. I've had just all manner of issues. And this project now needs to be finished. Um, it's not that I'm getting tired of it or bored of it. But I do want the project done. Um, because I've got a stack of other projects that are queuing up behind it. And, yeah, while I'm loving the work, <laughs> I do need to crack on with it. Um, right, so I'm pleased that the screen fits is the is kind of the, the, the main objective of this morning, Saturday morning. Actually, no, Saturday afternoon. Um, the wheels. Hmm. I'm not convinced about this colour. I am not convinced. Um... Yeah, I don't know what you guys think. Trappies, I don't know that the wheels that are on my dad's car are the right shade either. That's a much, much lighter grey, uh, silver, as is that one. But that's what they should be like. Um, so that this is um, John's car that's um, fourth in line, fifth in line, fifth in line. Um, in the queue um, and yeah it's much more of a silvery silvery so it probably is I mean it's, it is actually quite close to that so let's compare to this one this is my gonna be my new hose reel this one and I think what we might need to do is go up and see the paint map tomorrow because look that's quite a difference isn't it yeah when when they're side by side I'm not happy with that color uh, I'm going to paint those again that's a fucking ball's ache, isn't it? Eh? Eh? Yes, never mind. I'll put it down to experience. I'll be able to use that grey elsewhere. Um, I only used about half a litre of paint on these anyway, so it's not a huge issue. Um, yes, never mind. Shit happens. I can, I can leave the insides and the beaded edge as they are. It's just this outside face that I want to paint that colour. Um, and it needs more than a rattle can because the rattle can is just going to chip off. But if nothing else, I've got given them a decent base coating. So I'll take this up tomorrow and get the closest match I can to that. As yeah. And I mean, this is a satin, but hmm, not overly impressed. It's metallic as well. That's powder coat, and that isn't. And you see the problem with the powder coat is it starts to crack up around here. I mean, I don't know why they even powder coated this rim, in all honesty. They grip blasted back, found an enormous amount of rust on it. Thought, oh, we'll powder coat that, that'll look good. Never mind. Right, onwards, onwards. A busy Sunday, oh yes. Right, I've put the curved corner uh, rocker covers on the engine. Just cleaned them up a little bit with some uh, st steel wool. Didn't want to go berserk on them and make them look absolutely fantastic because otherwise the rest of the engines would look shit. Um, alternator. I've agreed with the customer we're going to go down the Lucas ACR route. Um, it's factory. It's going to work. I just can't be bothered with messing around with other alternators and trying to make them fit on the, the bracket here and also line up with the water pump. 
Um, I've loosely kind of fitted an ignition coil there, that loose in fact. Um, distributors in, engines timed, that's at top dead centre. Dead easy to do these things. The only sort of tricky bit is making sure the oil pump drive is in right. And what I typically do, I've done it on another video, but if you imagine looking down the hole that the distributor goes into, you want the shaft or the, the T-piece for, uh, for the oil pump to be at around 10.30 to 11 on the hour hand, if you get my drift, and then the distributor slots straight in. Um, finished up over here, so I had to do the clutch pipe. Uh, done that, I'm going to do the chassis line tomorrow. I kind of ran out of enthusiasm, really, on that. Um, it's going to shock some of you folks, but I've been talking to the uh, the owner, and we're going to go with side repeaters on the front wings, um, and mainly because of safety reasons more than anything else. But if you imagine that you've got the repeater on the front of the car here and you've got the repeater on the back of the car there um, and in this modern day and era where people are distracted by many 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 things other than you know the actual art of driving a vehicle um, being seen is probably more important than um, the actual kind of authentic a suffix feature so i'm gonna get a pair of new ones of these it does save me the bother of trying to fill these holes in and this panel's painted um, and then I've been going through boxes and boxes and boxes of bits trying to work out what I've got missing um, and at the moment the only thing I can find that I've got missing um, at the moment <laughs> is the um, one of these I need that's the lock mechanism I'll be able to find that on one of the door trims I'm sure and one of the door pulls so you've got the door handles these are the handles that you pull on and they open the door. But then you've got the actual door pull, which is this thing, which fix, fixes rigidly onto the door. That's what you yank the door closed. I'm missing one of those. Um, I think I've got everything else I need to assemble the doors. Um, I was looking at quarter lights, because I have got a pair of quarter lights for passenger side, and I've only got the remains of one for a driver's side. And I was looking at it thinking, well... Why don't I just undo that pot rivet there um, and see, well, if I put that device onto there and then I could tidy this one up, just needs a, a tiny slot of metal welding in there and cleaning over. But then there's there's a couple of other kind of little things. So you can see it's, pardon me, hickety uppities, God's sake, Richard. It's offset there, so, so the, that's the inside of the frame there and there. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to chop this one up. Um, I have got a four door driver's side frame which is out here in yard oh grief it's nice and quiet today nice and quiet sorting all my door frames out as well trying to find a decent pair so obviously these are the passenger sides here and there's the remains of a quarter light down there look um and these are the driver's side frames i've got now this one here is for a four door and while the four door kind of quarter light is taller i might be able to get away with using this piece down here so i might i'm going to take this quarter light out and see if that bit actually works if not i'm going to, have to go to a plan d or c and i don't know i may end up having to chop the other one up in order to get a good driver's side quarter light frame it's not uncommon to get them like this it really isn't um, so that's quarter lights. Mirror, again, purists, look away. Um, I'm going to go for a mirror. Um, this is from a 92 Vogue, from my old Vogue. Got map lights underneath it, and that'll be fairly easy to wire in. Sticks on the screen. There you go. Um, but other than that, oh, I've got the transfer lever. So I've bolted the transfer lever in. I just need to shorten the rod that goes over to the transfer selector here. And then I've just suddenly discovered I haven't actually even got a handbrake. So I'm, I'm scouting around at the moment just trying to find a handbrake. It needs to be one of the uh, LT77 or uh, automatic ZF uh, handbrakes, I believe. The one, one of the handbrakes that sits on top of the transmission cover, not below it. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, that's pretty much about it, really. Sunday, 4.30. I'm going out for a beer. I've had enough. 
And the screen is in. AVG windscreens, thank you very much. Nice Pilkington screen. It was a bit on the tight side around the top edge. And basically what I had to do was undo the bolts down or loosen the bolts down the side of the A-post to bulkhead section because the bulkhead needs to move a little bit in proportion with. It's only a couple of millimetres, but it's kind of what it needed. Um, so you can see how much that was central there. It's moved a good two mil. That one was absolutely, that one was so tight, that one. It's the last one I undid. But it's in. Nice Pilkington screen. Look at that. That's good. Well chuffed with that. Um, right, on, onwards with the rest of it now. <laughs> I've got the um, the mirror, but I need to get the pad uh, to stick on the windscreen, which I've ordered. They used to come on the screens. They don't come on the screens anymore. And I was chatting to um, the chap from the windscreen company. He said, no, what they have to do, because this is the heated screen, you see, that I'm going to put in my car, in L95. Um, and they have to heat these up in order to break the bond, and it breaks the glass. So I said, no, I want this screen. It's a nice screen. Keep that one. There you go. So that's that done. Excellent. And that was the... Wasn't the rubber that came out of the uh, of, of this car originally, but it is the filler strips that came out of this car originally. It's a step forwards. It is. Oh, that was a funny thing to say there, Richard. Right, I'm going to get on with it now. Um, so, really, I think I just obviously need to tighten up the bulkhead. I loosened the roof up as well because thinking that was going to be the issue, but the roof hasn't shifted a millimetre. Roof didn't move. It was basically it was the alignment of the bulkhead and the A-post on both sides. The bulkhead needed to shift against the A-post. And just by loosening those four bolts, you don't have to do that for every single time. Now the screen's in, it's all in aligned, aligned, aligned alignment. Um, so it should be okay. Um, but obviously, because I've had the whole thing apart and reassembled it, don't do those four bolts up on each side until the screen's in. Oh yes, I was only here, he was here what, 40 minutes putting that in. Hardly any swear words at all. Well, that's a bit better. Yeah, much better. Um, they actually look like Range Rover wheels now, rather than something of a battleship. Now, if anyone's going to ask, this is the colour that I used this time round. Uh, has it got a RAL on it? There we are, RAL. 841GL. Is the, uh, is the code I used on those. Just in case anyone's asking, because I know a lot of folk, you do ask. Um, right, today, what are we going to do today? I've had my hair cut. Well, it grows on work time. I get it cut on work time. Now, what I want, really want to do, I think I'm going to get the back wing painted on the other side, get this door prepped and ready for paint. Um, I need to reshim the door after the screen's gone in because the bulkhead's moved. Um, which isn't a problem, it's just part of the learning exercise. These things happen. Um, and I'll see, I'll put the wings up here as well, under the uh, under the cover. So let me crack on now, I'm going to get the radio on. You guys don't have to listen to me listening to the radio. Um, oh, the other thing I've been doing is I've been trying to sort out the headlining. So, Martrim. Absolutely amazing people. Here we are, Martrim. .co.uk. These guys do uh, the headlining kits. Um, so they do a complete kit for the entire Range Rover Classic. And what I really wanted to do here uh, was find something that was going to complement the kind of the Palomino of the of the interior of the car. Now, it's a difficult one, really, isn't it? I don't want grey. It's not quite that one, although it's not far off. It's going to be a question for the customer, I think. That's the exact match, I think. <clears throat> I think that, you know, it might look like a, you're inside a butterscotch yoghurt if you're not too uh, careful. If it was down to me, I'd have that one. Getting ready for a bit more primer. I flatted back the filler on this edge here. Um, I've got that pretty much how I want it to be. Worked on the rear corner. This is both the driver's side panels here and the fuel filler. That all fits together. Got the two rear seat supports ready for primer. Got the side window top channels. Ready for the primer. Prime the inside of the uh, rear tailgate, um, and then I can start working on the outside of it. Because um, it's going to take a couple of goes, really, in order to kind of get the whole thing damn well painted. So I might as well paint the inside faces 
Um, and then I've just got a couple of bits on these seats. For some reason, the primer didn't stick, and I suspect, because I was probably doing the fatal trick here of just using up a bit of primer that I had in the gum. Uh, and what I've basically done, you can see I put it over unclean steel. <laughs> what a prick. Um, it happens. Yeah, if you've got a little bit of primer left in your gun, don't be tempted to kind of use it on something that you kind of just, just tip it. Um, I use a panel wipe. I'm going to clean this bumper up in a second. I use a panel wipe, which is this stuff. Look at that, panel prep. Also smart. Oh, yes. Um, and this stuff, wipe it on. Wipe it off. Um, and I'll go over all of these bits. I'll lay them out in a second because I need to be able to get around with the paint gun. I'm not going to video me painting because this workshop just fills up with dust. Oh. Compress this off. See how much moisture's in it. A fair amount. There's not a huge amount of pressure left in there. Let's just take that off. Hey. That good is some moisture traps, eh? There you go. Um, right. Slight distraction there, Richard. A distraction. Right, so I'm going to get this lot set out so I can get on with it. I'm going to plug in James's light that he donated to me because this thing just gives me a bit more light over in this side of the workshop. I need to get the lighting sorted out properly. Look at this bastard. Let me plug it in. Ah. Oh. God's teeth, Richard. Oh, no power. <laughs> That'll be a fail then. What a tit. I should go on now. There it goes. It's just starting to warm up. It takes a while to warm up, so I might as well turn it on now. Now, for painting, I'm using this two pack um, four plus one. Uh, filler primer, very very nice. Easy to sand. I use this very smart little dirt cheap uh, 1.8 gun, which I picked up up the road at the paint shop because my old 1.8 gun was just doing nothing to piss me off, so I bought another one. Uh, obviously moisture trap, you need that. Um, and then yeah, I'm going to clear the decks here now, and then satin black is for all of the black parts. Wheel paint, as I showed you earlier on. I don't need that today. Oh, I do need. How much blue have we got left? We've got enough blue. Oh my goodness. There you go. Get through quite a lot of this stuff, so I buy it in big cans. Obviously, this stuff being a two pack, you've got to be a little bit careful of it, folks. I mean, I use. That's my dusk. Actually, that's probably not a bad mask there for um, painting. But this one I use. When I'm painting. The only thing I don't do, which I probably should do when I'm painting, um, when I'm painting, you can see, so yesterday I was painting silver. These were blue two days ago. Um, I do change the filters fairly regularly. And when I put that on my face, I put my hands over the outside, and if I can't breathe, then it's sealed. Great. Um, yeah, I see the light is warming up, and that'll be white in a minute. Very good. Very, very good indeed. Right, so I'm going to crack on with this and less gabbing on to you good folk and more getting on with this shit because I've got a lot of shit to do. Right. The brakes and the clutch. With Ben. Hello, Ben. Hello. Um, so brakes and clutch are bled through, working beautifully. I only had a minor problem with one leak over there because I forgot to do the fucking union up. These things happen. We also uh, rejigged this door. Check it out. That is beautiful. Uh, I had to redo this one because the bulkhead shifted very, very slightly when we messed around with the screen. So I think that's all good. I'm well chuffed with that. Um, and then put the last of the brake lines in here. Runs through to the... Uh, Ben's just trashing the uh, workshop in the background. 
um, put that line, last line in over there. Um, and yeah, bled them through. I shall check it overnight for leaks. And then the only other thing I did, I got the used old stock set of um, power steering hoses and the Imperial fixing fits onto that pump. What the fuck, I'm thinking. No fucking, oh, well, anyway. The only thing I've got with this, the challenge is that piece of pipe there needs to be on a, you can't see because the fuel line's in the way, that needs to be a U section so it takes this straight down and away from the fuel filter because it's clattering into the fuel filter. <clears throat> but I'll get those sent off and get a set made up. That'll happen tomorrow. Got seat, bo seat belts to send off as well. Um, yeah, painting tomorrow. Painted a load of shit. Bottom of the tailgate, or the inside edge of the tailgate. Done this wing. Now, it looks all right from here. But when you look from this direction, it's fucking horrible. Wibbly wobbly all over the place. But when you look from the top, it's only wibbly wobbly there, which I can probably fix. I'm undecided. It's the only bit on this wing that's a real problem. I can't do anything with it. It's that badly damaged and mangled. Um, I think it's going to end up being the best of a bad lot. But it looks all right for now. I'll put some paint on it and see what it looks like then. Um, yeah, right. Okay, dokey. Right, yesterday. Um, nice to see Paul yesterday. Paul from Minneapolis. Good to see you, mate. Thank you very much for the beer supplies. Uh, very much appreciated. And lunch, too. Turned up all the way from Minneapolis to say hello to Richard at Church House Classics. Um, he's also got Range Rover. He's got Aston Martin. He's got lovely cars. He has. He really has. Expat living in Minneapolis. So there you go. Big shout out to Paul. Thank you, sir. Um, right. Door. Driver's door. Um, I have primed. Used the 2K acrylic uh, primer. <coughs> Coughing now because I've just rattle canned all of the shut faces on this because I want to put the door skin on this today. Don't worry about this. This is all hidden against the inside of the door skin, which is also black. Um, uh, and I'm going to get the door skin fitted and this door on. Now, <coughs> Ben and I started working with these um, with these depots yesterday. Um, so we've got a couple of challenges. First and foremost, there's a dent on this one, um, which I need to sort out. I did put a skimmer filler on it yesterday, <coughs> but it didn't really go anywhere. Um, and the second problem we've got is that these have been repainted at some point. I know they were repainted green, but prior to that they were repainted blue and a slightly different shade of blue to the original. And the paint has reacted. So those are going to have to be taken right back to bear, I think. Bear. Um, in order to sort them out. I'm going to have to sort those out later on. A little bit of black rattle can over the top there. It doesn't actually matter, does it really? Um, and then I've primed up things like the, uh, the, the tailgate hinges and so forth. Last skimmer filler on this back wing, which I'm going to block back, and then that's going to get top coated today, as long as with that and the inside of the boot lid. There you go. And the fuel filler. All of these bits and bobs here, so this is the rear seat supports and the rear seat boxes, I'll, I shall top coat those Palomino um, today or either this afternoon or tomorrow morning. But then we've been going through, um, and I've been, well, it's a whole ton of stuff has arrived. So let's do, this, this is post box, but this is, this is not donations, this is stuff I've bought, but I thought you might like to see some of the stuff that I've bought. So these have come from classic car plates. Uh, I didn't actually say on here, I'll put a link in the description as to where they came from. But look at those, I mean, that, th th this is the style of plate that the, uh, the Vilars would have had, the h dredge cars would have had, and it's entirely period. Um, for this particular car. And this is the plates I actually planned to put on to Bob um, when he was finished. So they are absolutely and utterly gorgeous. I don't know why I'm throwing the chicken back down there because I need it. So they can go back in there and in the box of treasure. <coughs> I also bought these fellas. Now, window winders for Range Rover Classics looked like that originally. Um, and I bought these from MGB Hive. MGB Hive, uh, they're on eBay, mgbhive.co.uk and they come with all of the little chrome fixings in the middle and everything, rather than those khaki items that you see as reproductions, I bought these. Beautiful, they're fucking beautiful. Um, also got yesterday, I'm not going to show you that, but I bought a bin plate because the VIN plate wasn't on the slam panel. In fact, there was no slam panel on this car when I got it. So I got a VIN plate, matches up to the chassis number that's stamped on the chassis, so no fear of ringing here, folks. 
Um, I've got my finger over the rest of the VIN number because you've got the reg number, you're not having the VIN number. Um, there you go. So so that is um, the uh, the original style of the Pop back into the place of pride. Picked up a handbrake. I realised with all my bloody shenanigans on yeah dealing with the uh, the um, uh, uh, transmission cover, I didn't actually have the bloody handbrake. It's a bit of a cock up that was. Uh, so I've got that now. I can, I can finish that job off probably tomorrow. Uh, and then. While I've been going through all the stash of parts, I have, uh, don't worry about this address here, that's that's my business address, it's also my home address. Anyone turning on my home address without an invite gets a very, very, very robust shudder off. Um, but uh, you're more than welcome to turn up at the business address, sorry, my, my workshop address, and the several have. Uh, right now, uh, when I was going through my stash of parts, I realised I didn't have the reflector for the driver's side rear. Now, they've actually sent me a pair of these good news. Can I order a pair? They, they've actually sent me a pair, brand spanking new. They're not, they have got Lucas stamped on them. Look at that. Brand spanking new. They were nowhere near as expensive as the uh, new old stock that's out there. Again, I'll link here where these chaps came from. But they're rather beautiful, aren't they? Right, well, I'm glad that came as a pair. Because customers can buy both those from me. Um, let's put the receipt over there. Number plates, number plates. Right, what's in this big one? We like big bastards. I don't know what's in this one. It's such fun. It's like Christmas all over. I've ordered, I mean, the customer's been ordering stuff for me, but also I have been ordering stuff. So it's difficult to know what I've been ordering and by who. Oh, now. This could be special. This could be really special. I know that they are the latest style with the black line down the side, but they will fit onto the earlier housings. They are rather special, aren't they? Certainly better than the, uh, the used old stock items I've got. You can't get the ones that go right up to the edge at the moment. And those that you can are comedy prices. So, that's a pair of those. Beautiful. Again, another eBay special. I shall put in the link below the eBay trader name I got those from. On here, Euro Wagons, no use, Eurowagons.com. But he trades on eBay through, he hasn't put his eBay ID on him. I'll put it in the description below. But very, 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 very nice. Happy with that. Now we should have a alternator. So this has come from H Bowers Limited. I ordered it online. Um, it's an 18 ACR for a left hand fitting, which should be correct for the um, the car. I don't know what I'm doing with this box. There we are, we're in. There's the invoice, and it tells me indeed H Bowers that registered. Oh, they've got an eBay website as well, but I actually bought it online. This website here, BoasPartsOnline.co.uk. There you go. This is an 18 ACR alternator. It's original fitment, really, for the car. Let's see if I can get it out of the box. They're not like these things. Right, that box can go down there. Let's see what it looks like. Let's check if it looks beautiful. One of these boxes. Excitement. Ah, oh, look. Ah, oh, yes. So it comes with a pulley. Let's get out of the box. That's something special, isn't it? Yes. Standard Lucas 3 pin connector on the back there, which would be typical for. But it's slightly outrated over the original kind of 35 amp that this car would have worn when it was brand spanking new. 
but then I've upgraded all the wiring, so <coughs> it kind of makes sense to upgrade the alternator. Oh, that's a horrible noise. Sorry, folks. Uh, alternator performance curve. 56 amps. I thought it was 60 amps. There you go. 56 amps. Nicely done. Universal J plug. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Nice. Right, that's good. Cool. I'm away this weekend. I won't bother turning up to get a tablet at the workshop this weekend because I'm not there. <coughs> Take this is away. Wedding anniversary. Oh, your wedding anniversary, Richard. Bloody years. Have I remembered? Right, this one might have come from eBay. Recycled packaging I love. You have to recycle your packaging. Not sure about buying special tape. eBay tape though. It's a shoebox, so I'm gonna run there, mate. Right, okay. What have we got here? Oh! A pair of horns. Now these have come from a MG, but they're high-low horns and made in France rather than Chineseium. And the only thing I need to do is drill through that to separate the two horns into two chunks and I can splice these straight onto the loom. And they should work beautifully. That's nice. Very cheap as well. Rover 200 they came from. Toot, toot. I'll test them out before we go berserk on them. But, uh, they work, they work. If they don't, then I'm afraid they'll keep that. It's uh, always useful to hang on to these. Crawford Motors, there we are. Vast stocks of used rover parts, 1980s onwards. Thank you very much, Crawford Motors. Not that they donated it. This is not a donation. This is stuff I bought off eBay. But they've supplied it. They've gone to the effort of upcycling. Now, what have we got here? We have got old oh, speakers. So rear speakers. The customers ordered. The customers ordered these for me to go into the back end of the car. Or are they the front? Four inch two way speakers, 60 watts peak. Nice enough. 10 centimeter speakers, they should fit straight in, shouldn't they? Well, we'll wire them up. Now, on that note, I'm expecting this one should be a head unit. Just have chosen the head unit because I'm going to lob into the dashboard. It is a... Looks a bit modern, doesn't it? But it's got foam control by the looks of things. Yeah. Bluetooth foam control. Nice. I won't open that up now because that's not going to go a large box and locked away in the container for when I'm going to put that lot in. <coughs> these little speakers, these fellas, um, these, these, these came the other day, I will open these. Because what I do is under the centre grill, you can put a two way speaker. Come down here, Richard. Come down here. You can put a two way speaker, or I believe you can actually fit. Two, we've got lots of tape, excessive use of plastic, folks. Two very, very, very tiny discrete speakers. Now, these two could go side by side underneath the centre grill. It may produce a good enough sound for the customer. It's certainly the setup I've got in my stag, um, and it works beautifully in the stag, but then I don't really listen to the radio that much in the stag because the exhaust is too nice. Um, but if it's no good, then I'll put speaker boxes underneath the seats. I don't want to be cutting through the um, braids gone blank. Cutting through the door panels. There you go. I knew I knew.